Okay, what the hell is going on? Why do I see MJF still on my screen? There we go. That's a little more like it. <laughs> a little joke almost screwed up my computer. Jesus, God almighty. That's not a real banner, everybody. It's not real. Got to look closely. It said LOL, LOL, LOL. <laughs> MJF botching my show. Good evening, everybody. Now do you get it? Making those comparisons, a loose cannon, Brian Pillman. Now do you get it? Started as a shoot, turned into a work. Says the internet wrestling community media. Started as a work. Started as a shoot, turned into a work. The fuck are they talking about? See, if you are a regular viewer of this show, we've picked on this, picked up on this a long, long time ago. MJF, cocksucker, at autograph signings, meeting fans doing interviews, making appearances, always the ultimate asshole, the ultimate unprofessional. He's been doing this for years. You'd think that when he said 2024 that he may leave, you think after the first time he said it and then said it again and then said it again, and then said it again, and then said it again, and then said it again. You think Tony Khan just sat there and took it up the you-know-what? You think this was a work or shoot that turned into a work? These people talking about it. Here is the truth, everybody. We talked about this already. Remember Cody Rhodes? For that month or two leading into WrestleMania, sources tell me that Cody is not yet committed. WrestleMania weekend. I love Dave Meltzer. But as I said before, he went on Denise Salcedo's show and said, you know, people close to Cody, I don't remember the exact words, but, you know, it's not a guarantee that he's going to be at WrestleMania. These people did the same shit with MJF. Here's the deal, everybody. Everybody that is saying this, is not in the wrestling business. I'm not in the wrestling business. I dipped my toe in for a little while doing indie stuff, but I don't do it anymore. But thank God to the mass maniac and others who guided me, Harry Slash and others. Shout out to Harry. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Talk past, past each other's path on social media. The boys do not need to know the private business of other boys. I actually watched people for the last week. Oh, no, Tony Khan would never lie to the boys about MJF. Fuck is their business about that stuff? You take note that no one in wrestling stepped up ever Wow, unprofessional, unprofessional, unprofessional. I'm but nobody. Not a single person. This is a private company. What Tony Khan does and doesn't do with MJF is nobody's fucking business except for Tony Khan and MJF. Anybody, you could ask anybody that has been in indie wrestling for a little while. Ask them if you're friends with them. Do you pry into other wrestlers' business? Here's what happened in two or three sentences. MJF legitimately was frustrated that he started with very little money, 
blew up and was still making that little money. We compared that to a rookie in Major League Baseball. We made that comparison many times. People wanted to know. They needed to know. When MJF started teasing it on TV, they needed to know more. I must know more. You think MJF told anybody online? You think he told the Meltzers, the Fightfuls, the Sports Kitas, the PW Insight? You think he told anybody? You think Tony Khan told anybody? Nobody said a fucking word about it. But they needed to know more. So they create their own scenario. It's none of their fucking business. It's none of my business. But because the news media needed to know more, didn't know more, what happens? They, MJF especially starts fucking with them even more. We talked about it. You could go on Travelocity right now, book a flight, pay an extra 50 bucks to get refunded if you cancel it. You're MJF. You're in a company run by a billionaire, and you're playing off this loose cannon that he might show, he might not show, he might show, he might. Again, you think he was going to fuck over Wardlow after this gigantic storyline build all this time? You think week after week after week after week after week? You think after he lost to Wardlow at the pay-per-view, what did you think he was going to talk about on Dynamite? Flowers? The weather? The fuck do you think he was going to talk about? The network has a delay button. If Tony Khan was really concerned, that MJF could possibly go off the rails, go into business for himself. You have a delay button. You know what? Let's set it for 20 seconds. Let's set it for 10. How's about three? Wasn't set. Tony Khan, AEW, liked to do these Easter eggs. Little CM Punk from 20 years ago, little tributes to Bret Hart, how many times did I say on this show that this is Brian Pillman, loose cannon, leaving WCW, teasing going elsewhere, shows up in ECW, CM Punk was Shane Douglas last night. Brian Pillman was MJF last night. You don't think they couldn't pass up a little bit of Poking fun at Eric Bischoff, if you go back and watch Cyberslam 96. That's what that was yesterday. MJF begging to be fired, begging to be fired, begging to be fired. This is loose cannon all over again. And as much as I criticize Tony Khan, sometimes being a petulant child, I fucking love every minute of what is going on with this right now. Because the net can't just sit back and enjoy a wrestling story. How many times have I said in 25 plus years that some of the greatest storylines are the ones that you can't find the line between reality and story? This is loose cannon, Brian Pillman all over again. And MJF is playing it beautifully. Tony Khan is playing it beautifully. If MJF was such a goddamn professional, how does nobody speak up? Especially after Sasha and Naomi. And I know, I know what you're going to say. Oh, the Sasha and Naomi is different from MJF because WWE fucked Sasha and Naomi. Well... If AEW is paying the ex WWE guys four, five, six times the amount and MJF is getting paid bullshit, isn't that considered fucking someone over? But you can't compare Tony Khan to Vince McMahon. That's sacrilegious. How dare you? 
the wrestling media needed to know more about MJF and they couldn't get more. So they came up with assumptions and those assumptions ended up being wrong, but they started to believe their assumptions. So when this went down, oh, it was originally a shoot turned into a work. It's none of your fucking business what goes on behind the scenes. You could report it in the dirt sheets, but because it's teased, oh, 2024, I could possibly leave. Have you paid attention to what MJF has been doing for the last couple of years? I mean, either these people are just slow. That's, that's probably the nastiest I could, way I could say it in 2022. Either they are slow or they are intentionally taking this because this clickbait, the teasing, he quit, he this, he that. If this guy was so unhinged, if AEW was so concerned that he could go into business for himself, at minimum, at minimum, you have the delay button. No. Come on. Seriously. See, a lot of you out there already know what this is. And it this is awesome. What he did yesterday... I mean, obviously, they got major clearance from Warner Media and Discovery to use f bombs on TV. You didn't see any reports of Warner Media and Discovery, you know, apologizing for f bombs for yesterday. You know, let's read between the lines. MJF is not going to fuck over Wardlow. If MJF did the job on Sunday, you know, you think he met with Tony Khan for breakfast? Monday morning on two hours sleep and suddenly worked out this beautiful deal? Come on. This has been building. Tony Khan loves old school. I've been saying for three years that Tony Khan's fantasy promotion is Ring of Honor meets ECW. This is old school ECW. If you have never seen Brian Pillman's appearance on CyberSlam 1996, you can't just watch up to the point, I'm going to yank out my Johnson and piss in his hellhole. You do not stop there. You have to go all the way to the end where Brian Pillman pulled some redheaded goof out from the crowd and started hitting him with a spoon. Go listen closely when you hear Shane Douglas. He's shooting. He's shooting. Oh, he's shooting. We believed it at the time to an extent. We were like... You know, Brian Pillman, you know, the, yeah, he was supposed to be there. And yeah, this was a work, but it kind of turned into a shoot. And we don't know where the line is drawn with Brian Pillman, you know, with reality and suspension and disbelief. But if you go back and you watch that closely and you examine it, when Brian Pillman is escorted out by security and he sees some redheaded fan at ringside, suddenly security backs off. And Brian Pillman throws him over the guardrail. And nobody charges Brian Pillman. They let him roll the fan into the ring. He just so happens to have a spoon in his boot. Maybe he was going to have soup later. And maybe he was concerned that the local deli didn't have spoons. Come on. I can't believe that people out there, you know, are this naive or they're just too embarrassed to admit they were wrong. They were too embarrassed to admit they were wrong. So they got to push this narrative. Oh, no, it was a work or shoot turned into a work. There was no shoot storyline on TV turned into a work. The first time he teases, I'm getting out of here, if he's going against what Tony Khan's wishes are, that would have been rectified seven, eight months ago. Nobody picks up on that. Please, please. I appreciate, and I mean this sincerely, I appreciate every single one of you who have dealt with and allowed me to keep beating this drum for a long time of what MJF was doing and what this was mimicking, and now you're seeing it in full bloom. I wish we had Twitter and Facebook and Instagram 
1996. I wish we would have had, if you, if we had this social media back then, oh my God. Oh my God, it would have been so much fun. And guess what? You know, at that time, I didn't know exactly where the line was. But you see, that's the advantage of being an old man like me. You've gone through all of this. But again, you no one on the roster comments about any of MJF's unprofessionalism all these times. Remember the meet and greet on Saturday? This was not StarCast 9. This was not Joe's fish and chips and wrestling paying MJF for AEW five grand to bring him in for an autograph sign. This was an AEW meet and greet. Now, if I would have done anything different yesterday, I would have had MJF no show. I would have had MJF no show. You advertise MJF, and MJF doesn't show. And you add to that suspension of disbelief. I think they rushed it for a week. I think, in my opinion, they expected such a huge rebound in the ratings this week because of the title change with CM Punk, because of some of the storyline progressions, because of all the buzz and controversy with MJF this past weekend, that, no, we don't want to wait a week. We want to blow our load five days later. WWE made that mistake when CM Punk won the championship and walked out through the crowd and said he was going to go to Ring of Honor. They rushed it. Before you could blink an eye, CM Punk is at an, some convention confronting Triple H. It's not even two weeks. What are you what, rushing it for? So I love every minute of this. I love it. I love it. When you can't find the line, when it's blurred, that's wrestling at its finest. When you have a feud where you can't determine you a clear-cut winner, that's wrestling at its finest. This is wrestling at its finest. I know MJF would never be able to say what he said last night. Tony Khan is a mark. I'm a mark. Every single one of you out there are a mark. You know, Mark is not always a negative word, but go back to CyberSlam 96 when Brian Pillman was making fun of smart marks. This is beautiful. No, Mongo, I, I won't even say it was all a work because everything going on behind the scenes was not a storyline on TV. Making a one-sentence remark that 2024, he may be out of here. You know, again, if that was a big no-no, that would have been addressed nine months ago. All right? That's not this giant storyline coming to pass. It's just that people blew this up so big. MJF is a master. The guy is mastering this. Brian Pillman mastered this in 1996. Brian Pillman got a giant WWF contract. They still signed him. They still gave him the money after he had the Hummer accident and his ankle was all fucked up. He, the rogue horseman. Back then, he was the rogue horseman. Now, MJF is the broken pillar. As I coined it, where is it? I thought I did a good job with this. You know, I wish I would have made, had time to make a unique symbol. I would have probably changed that to a P and maybe cracked the P as the four pillars. He's the cracked pillar of AEW. He's one of the four pillars. And right now it's cracked. But the man is a genius. Roddy Piper is his favorite growing up. It's a, it was his wrestling idol. Roddy Piper, the lines were blurred. I grew up Piper as a heel in the early 80s where fans just wanted to kill this motherfucker. I met Piper in person three times. One of the most beautiful, awesome, friendliest people around. They're like, this is the guy back in 84 that we wanted to see killed? The guy is old school. And I'm telling you, man is doing a fine job. And this narrative that 
the boy, Tony Khan would not lie to the boys. What the fuck does that even mean? It's none of the boys' business of what is discussed with MJF. You think these wrestlers are going to say, hey, Tony, you know, uh, what's the deal with MJF and his contract? No one would even dare do something like that. That's a, that's a no-no in pro wrestling. It's nobody's business. You worry about yourself. Oh, pay very, very close attention who you see online. You know, you here's something you got to realize in 2022. You know, um, I'll, I'll use me as an example, okay? My Patreon, all right? I now plug Manscaped for a little while. By the way, tonight's episode, this special episode of Thursday Night Dynamite meets Q&A with yours truly is brought to you by Manscaped sponsor of the show four years ago shout out chris mills welcome to the family by the way i think that thing in the back might start updating again somebody said to me that that thing wasn't updating i think i fixed it we'll see but um you know four years ago when i opened the patreon there was only three patreon channels out there in wrestling only three three or four and now there's hundreds Four or five hundred Patreons. And now everybody everything is spread so thin because you got Conrad, you got Fightful, you got maybe ten that eat up and charge a decent penny for it. And fans, especially with the economy, have to choose who they want to support. My Patreon is this compared to what it used to be. But you know, with the Patreon getting smaller and smaller and smaller and expenses there, you know, I pick up a sponsor here and there. And do you, real, do you know that people complained? They get eight Patreon shows a month that are not streamed outside of the show. Eight Patreon exclusive shows. Every other show, they get ad free. But because I plug men's grooming for two minutes, I had about 10 people unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. So... You know, the point is, is that money and anything you make from the shows is spread so thin right now that people got to try to hold on to whatever they can. In the wrestling news world, they got to create any type of buzz. It's not always clickbait, but they got to create any type of buzz to get you to read their article to get you to listen to their show, to get you to watch their podcast, to get you to read their newsletter. And nine times out of 10, it is bullshit. How do sausages made? Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa was not on Dynamite yesterday. We've all, for the last five or six weeks, have repeatedly said, wow, Thunder Rosa's like got no TV time, almost no TV time whatsoever on Dynamite. That's Captain Obvious there. So yesterday, Thunder Rose is not on Dynamite. Check out how the sausage is made. This is, what's this channel? This is, hold on. Uh, hold on, I'm looking for the website. What culture? What culture? All right, now for those on audio only, I just, here we go with the unnamed sources again. They're fucking sources in AEW, supposed sources, okay? It says, Thunder Rose's lack of TV time in AEW has her unhappy what culture has learned. Unnamed sources close to the situation, whatever the fuck that means, is that the reigning AEW women's champion has become very frustrated with how little time she, she has. This was exasperated by Wednesday's episode of Dynamite on which Thunder Rosa received no focus despite her well-received match with Serena Deeb at Double or Nothing. While this week's Dynamite was heavy on Double or Nothing Fallout, it did not feature any form of a segment featuring the women's world champion. It was put, this is the most important sentence, everybody, it was put to what culture that Dynamite made it feel like the Deeb match didn't happen at all and now you have a thousand websites cutting and pasting it you have people on facebook talking about it on twitter everywhere else 
how the sausage is made. The fact is, Thunder Rosa got sick yesterday. Not COVID, stomach ache, a few other things under the weather. He said, ah, you know what? Double and nothing, big trip, a lot of jet lag, a lot of extra time. Rest, feel better. So they had to improvise. And the Rosa went home ill yesterday. That is the fact. Again, with these unnamed sources, I told you, I could come up here and do the unnamed sources and I could say, everybody, my sources tell me that WWE has suspended Sasha Banks and Naomi for 30 days. But WWE can extend that suspension for how long they want or deem fit. As of this post, our sources tell us that the suspension is for 30 days. But if WWE feels that it should be extended, they will. And we wait till the 30 days. And if they come back, see, we were right. If they're still suspended, our sources tell us that WWE decided to extend the suspension. Because Triple H, Nick Khan, Bruce Pritchard, Vince McMahon, uh, Stephanie, no one's going to go on social media and say, Don Tony, full of shit. You're lying. They, they know nobody's going to say a damn thing about it. Look at the tag team title situation. Wasn't the original situation that frustrated Naomi and Sasha? Hey, we want to defend these tag team championships. All right, well, right now, we need help putting over Bianca and Ronda Rousey. So we're not going to do anything with the titles until money in the bank at minimum. And they got very frustrated. Money in the bank is not until June or July. It's not until July. Okay. They walked out in the middle of May. So that would be almost two months that the titles would not have been defended. Did you see the reports this week that? The WWE Women's Tag Team Championship Tournament put on hold. <laughs> they can't. It's been on hold. They weren't going to do anything till Money in the Bank. How the sausage is made. Nothing changed. But you write it like that, and everybody thinks, oh, look, exclusive news. This is what's going on online right now. Everybody is desperate to get you to watch their show, listen to their podcast, write, uh, subscribe to their newsletter. So what did you see this week at MJF Quits? He's, he booked a flight. He didn't get on the flight. He didn't show here. He didn't show there. He might be here. He might be there. Cody Rhodes may not work WrestleMania the day before Mania. It's not 100% that Cody Rhodes will appear kind of people you think you're dealing with here this is why they make millions and this is why we make ten dollars an hour you know professionals don't go on into business for themselves this dumb report that wade keller i hate signaling people out but that guy is so stupid sometimes my sources tell me that Vince McMahon would sign MJF even if MJF unprofessionally would have left Wardlow hanging and didn't show up in that. Who, who fucking told you that? Who told you that? Jose mopping the floor? Luann pouring Vince's coffee? The fucking mail clerk? Yeah, you got mail. Who the fuck told him that? Oh, my sources tell me this. My sources tell me you're a fucking dick. Goof. Be aware. And when you see these people over and over and over and over and over and doing this to you, you know, just say to yourself, do you like being jerked like that? Or do you get a little bit fed up with it? Now you understand why nobody in the news world will ever acknowledge any stuff that we cover, any stuff that we break, anything that I get from my sources. Because when I say to do you think... Any of them are going to like what I post online? You think any of them are going to, you know, he's right over there. No, <laughs> then, then everybody hates them. So be very aware, everyone. Be very aware. This should be a little bit of a learning lesson. So, um, by the way, uh, we will do NXT predictions tonight. We will talk about AEW's, you know, give you some quick results when you say, got the ratings. 
and Brandon Thurston released the quarter hour ratings already. Something very fabulous. And this is not necessarily a positive. Something very fabulous, fascinating happened with the ratings yesterday. Yeah, I'll show you now. I'll show you now. AEW yesterday did 900 and what did they do? Like 966, somewhere around there. They didn't break a million, which I'll be honest with you, surprises me. They couldn't blame it on sports. They couldn't blame it on tragedy. They couldn't blame it on any 969. Nine, six, Brandon Thurston works his ass off. He's not perfect, but he works his ass off. They did 969. Pay attention to quarter three. Quarter two, which was the first six minutes of MJF's promo. Devin M. Devin M says, I am on point tonight. I say you're on point. Thank you for 14 months of being a channel member, my brother. Thank you. Um, check out quarter three. For those in audience, well, let's go check out a, a quarter two. The second quarter of AEW Dynamite yesterday did 1,069,000 viewers. And that quarter featured the ending of CM Punk and FTR versus the Ass Boys. Um, and then you had six minutes, six minutes, Dougie Fresh, six minutes of MJF's promo, 1,069,000. Quarter three were the final three minutes of MJF's promo, the return of of Johnny Elite and his mystery opponent who turned out to be Miro, who basically Johnny was fed to, unfortunately. The third quarter dropped from a million sixty nine thousand to the lowest quarter of the entire night, nine hundred thousand. It went down a hundred and seventy thousand viewers. This, if you go back and look at the time, there was no major thing happening at the 8.30 p.m. hour. You didn't see any major fight or something go down in a sports game. It went down 170,000 viewers. Three minutes of that 15-minute quarter was MJF. The rest of it was Miro versus Johnny Elite. So right Tonight, everybody who was fawning over the MJF stuff and gushing, oh my God, unbelievable epic. Listen, I, I, I'll bring up 1996 one more time. When Pillman did what he did in ECW Arena in 96, I watched it about 50 times. I fucking loved it. That was the talk of everybody. Everybody was talking about it. So, you know, I don't blame everybody talking about this, but they're scrambling. Oh my God. You know, why did that go down 170,000 viewers? Did they get turned off by the MJF vulgar language? Or were fans just not interested of two former WWE guys fighting? Mido made his return. So who's to blame for the 170,000 viewership drop? Is it MJF? Is it Mido? Is it a combination thereof? But I found that fascinating fascinating i i guarantee you the people in that company are flabbergasted fucking 170,000 everybody that's more people that watch impact and new japan combined on thursdays combined more that blew me away when i saw that so all right um some very sad news to report and, uh, you know, look, obviously I was going to bring up the Pillman comparisons tonight. No idea that we had a tragedy yesterday. And um, Melanie Pillman, the wife of the widow of Brian Pillman, the mother of Brian Pillman Jr., the focus of, you know, a little bit of dark side of the ring, the storyline with MJF and Brian Pillman Jr., she died yesterday at the age of 56. Brian Pillman Jr. posted a statement about her passing, and I'm going to share it with you. 
He says, and I quote, yesterday at approximately 1 p.m., my mother, Melanie Pillman, was pronounced dead. Those of you who know my family story understand that I didn't have the best relationship with my mother, though my sister and I recently been in touch with her, working to improve that relationship. While I didn't spend too much time with her, she would always tune into my Twitch streams and interact with my fans, oftentimes sharing with them old stories about my father in the wrestling business. She had been helping out my sister with her son, Asher, by purchasing him baby clothes and was on relatively good terms with everybody as of late. Her death, while unexpected, was not surprising. Her lifestyle choices that dominated the better part of the last 25 years of her life had ultimately caught up with her. She was intelligent as she was beautiful, and her dark sense of humor could make even the biggest prude burst out with laughter. Although I had built up my resentment towards her, I was very proud of her, of taking part in the Dark Side of the Ring documentary and sharing the truth about our family story. That was the beginning of us mending our relationship. I do have regrets. I regret not giving her the time of day when she was trying so hard to be in our lives again. I regret not texting her back even though I had the time to. I regret not trying harder to break her of her bad habits and help her get the help she needed. A couple of weeks ago, she had been tuning into my Twitch stream when she told me in the chat that she was coming over to Linda's house to drop off some trading cards. I didn't see it in the chat, so I was annoyed at her for showing up unannounced. I met her outside and accepted the gift and gave her a hug and she went on her way. I truly regret not sitting down with her for a little bit, going to grab lunch with her. I regret being upset with her simply because she wanted to see her son. She She actually looked very healthy and sober. That was the last time I saw her. Thank you, Mom, for bringing me into this world and for you trying your absolute best. You were my number one fan in wrestling and on Twitch. Rest in peace. I love you. That is so sad. Both his parents are gone. They're both gone. Um, Look, obviously, once Brian Pillman passed, she was never the same. Um, my obvious biggest memory of Melanie Pillman, probably the second most uncomfortable moment I ever felt on WWE television, as far as Raw, SmackDown. Number one was Katie Vick. Even though I laughed my ass off that night, it was a little bit uncomfortable. My second most uncomfortable moment was this, when uh, Melanie Pillman was being interviewed the day after Brian Pillman passed away. And Vince, if you guys and gals never saw that segment on Raw, even now you would want to punch Vince McMahon right in the fucking mouth. Um, it, It was awful. It was awful. But look, you know, there were signs back in 97. uh, Or 99, I should say. I think it was 99. Um, you know, when Brian Pillman passed and they did the Brian Pillman Memorial Show, I remember covering it. I mean, I remember talking about it on my hotline and they were raising money for charity. And if I remember correctly, I think they were also doing like a couple of raffles at the time to try to raise more money. And all the money that was raised that day was supposed to be for her kids because obviously Melanie, you know, Brian passing suddenly, you know, they had little kids. And we learned shortly thereafter that the money was pissed away. The money did not go to the kids. It went to drugs and it went to, I think, Brian Pillman Jr.'s stepfather's truck. I think that's where most of the money went. And they paid a couple of bills. But the money didn't go where it was supposed to. All the wrestlers worked on that card for nothing. That card was very unique because if I remember correctly, didn't we have ECW, WWF, and WCW all on the same card? I think so, that show. Everybody allowed a little bit of their wrestlers to appear on that tribute show. Of course, it wasn't going to be televised. You could still see video of it. But, you know, for the past couple of decades, she had her demons. And um, 
you know, it's just sad. It's sad. This is why even when we were talking about the last couple of weeks, you know, you don't ever want to be in that situation where one of your closest loved ones passes away, whether they have problems or don't have problems. Or maybe you just have a little bit of, you know, frustrations with each other. You, tomorrow is never guaranteed, you know. And when my uncle passed away about 10 years ago, you know, my father and my uncle never made amends. And I know that hurts my father to this day. And I always vowed, I'm not going to be one of those that's going to say to my mom, yeah, I'll see you next week. I'll see you next week. Because that happened with my grandmother in 1991 when she died. She kept saying to me, when are we going to Atlantic City? Then we'll go, we'll go next week. We'll go next month. I promise you we'll go next month. And I kept putting it off, kept putting it, and she passed. She passed. And I felt so guilty afterwards. So this is why, you know, if you have close loved ones, parents, relatives, never take that for granted. I'm not trying to turn this into a PSA, but, you know, I feel really bad for Brian Pillman because now this is two parents gone because of it. So, and thank you everybody for the kind words. You know, that's one of the things different about the shows that I do here. Sometimes we can have a little bit of real talk, you know, mixed in with everything. So, uh, you know, rest in peace, Melanie Pillman. So, uh, quick results from yesterday's Dynamite CM Punk and FTR over the Gun Club at Max Caster. Miro over Johnny Elite. The Undisputed Elite and Hikaleo subbing for Adam Cole. They, you know, Tony Khan said Adam Cole was injured. I heard Tony Khan gave him the night off. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true or not, but, I'm, but you know, there's no injury as far as I'm aware of. They defeated Jurassic Express, Christian Cage, Matt Hardy, and Darby Allen, who was filling in for Jeff Hardy, who is very banged up. Wardlow over J.D. Drake. Ruby Soho and Tony Storm over Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. And I got to be honest with you. The match was good. I like the participants in that match, but why the fuck is Ruby Soho still going up against Britt Baker. That match, you know what that felt like yesterday? Ruby Soho should have gotten at least one win over Britt Baker, the receipt, some way, shape, or form. And now because there's no tournament on the line, there's no title on the line, okay, now she'll get that decisive win on Dynamite. That's what that felt like yesterday. Um, John Moxley over Daniel Garcia. I appreciate everybody who brought to my attention like, hey, you know, Daniel Garcia made John Moxley bleed. You know, um, uh, what's his face? Made him bleed as well. The other member of the Blackpool Combat Club. Um, what the hell's his name again? When I was in Japan, I always draw, draw a blank. Someone will bail me out. But, uh, hey, you think DT, they're priming Daniel Garcia into the Blackpool Combat Club. Um, it probably would put him in down the line. He fits perfect with Brian Danielson. Willie Utah, thank you very much, one fall, Marvin. So, like, strung up on MJF. My, my apologies, Wheeler. I don't think about you all that much. No disrespect, nothing personal intended. But um, Brian Danielson... And Daniel Garcia, I think that would be an awesome pairing. But let's also remember, you know, Daniel Garcia made Eddie Kingston bleed like a pig on Sunday, and nobody said anything about that. So, you know, of course we probably will see Daniel Garcia and Brian Danielson as a team later on, but I don't think this is seeds planted because of it. Um, now... Yesterday, CM Punk wanted to know who he's facing at Forbidden Door, and Hiroshi Tanahashi came out. Look, Hiroshi Tanahashi is awesome. But for a lot of you out there that don't watch New Japan, you're in for a treat. Those two guys face at Forbidden Door. But with all due respect, I watched a boatload of people who I know, for a shadow of a doubt, don't watch an ounce of New Japan. Oh my God, it's a match that I always dreamed of. Yeah, I don't think so. Some people, yes, but not a lot of people. Uh, we're hearing 
I think Meltzer, give him credit, he's the one that reported it. We're hearing from him and others that we may see Okada versus Hangman Page. That would be an intriguing match. Intriguing match. We got William Regal say what we thought was going to happen Sunday. Blood and guts. He said it yesterday. Chris Jericho says no, but then agreed to it as long as he gets a hair versus hair match against Ortiz. Now, my honest opinion, I think Jericho's getting a haircut. Ortiz's hair is already short. You know, I don't think it... Now, it would have been funny if they would have done that with Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston should have said, I'll challenge you hair versus hair. You know, just for comedy purposes. They, they should have actually done that. But I think Jericho is going to get a haircut. You know, he tweaks his look a little bit here and there. But, um, you know, we're going to see, obviously, that go down prior to Blood and Guts. Uh, also, and by the way, Blood and Guts will be the, July, uh, the June 29th edition of AEW Dynamite. So we're only uh, four weeks away. So that'll be coming down quick. Athena made her debut yesterday, and we also saw Stokely Hathaway with Jade Cargill. Love that pairing. Uh, Athena, you know, wants the TBS championship. You know, Jade Cargill, the storyline is making fun of Athena's height. Athena will be taking on Kira Hogan live on Friday. I think we know what the outcome of that match is going to be. You know, they're going to make Athena a viable contender for that TBS title. Do I see Athena taking the title off of Jay Cargill? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. You, One thing is for certain, they are going to milk that shit. They're going to milk that for a while before it happens. Um, that pretty much was the overall gist of yesterday's AEW Dynamite. Like I said, they did 969. I know a lot of people expected a million. I believe they will break a million sometime uh, this month. I really do think they'll break a million. Um, you know, it's, again, it just comes down to AEW fans, wrestling fans, choose to watch something else yesterday. But little by little, I think you'll get more and more. So, um, Harris B, my thoughts on William Morrissey leaving Impact. You know, I I know he it looks superb. Mentally, he's in the right place. I would love to see him back in WWE, and I'd love to see him back with Enzo. Um, he had the problems with Carmella. And even though, obviously, they've moved on, Carmella is now married to uh, Corey Graves, I don't know if that could happen. Look, I mean, we had Paige and, uh, you know, Xavier Woods on the same show for a little while. I mean, adults are adults. Um, look, Impact Wrestling obviously has problems. I know nobody pays attention to it because it's not a sexy popular topic you talk about impact wrestling you might get 10 people who are interested but william morrissey leaving that company doesn't surprise me just like the former bronson reed leaving that kind you're going to see people come and go you know i i brought it up two weeks ago you have the briscoes if you follow social media you would think that the briscoes are like the biggest names the biggest free agents in pro wrestling Impact Wrestling has them front and center, main eventing their shows, and the ratings go down. I mean, you know, that is problems. Those are problems. They bring people in, and the ratings don't seem to matter. So if it doesn't matter, then you probably should focus on bringing cheaper, less expensive wrestlers in, or you got to do something drastically different to get your ratings up. Look, even Kenny Omega, after a while, those ratings plummeted. I mean, there were times that Kenny Omega didn't even get 100,000 viewers in Impact Wrestling. So, 
Um, doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me. Anyway, Rampage for this Friday. We have the Lucha Brothers versus the Young Bucks. Kira Hogan versus Athena. And we have a TNT Championship match. Scorpio Sky defending against Dante Martin. Dante Martin. Battle of the Belts has been announced for Saturday, August 5th. Mark it on your calendar. If you are interested in going, it's going to take place at the Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Tickets will go on sale Friday, 10 a.m. Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, we're going to do NXT predictions in a couple of moments. By the way, speaking of Hell in a Cell, I'm thinking about doing a pre-recorded show Saturday. Some of you want me to do a recap of NXT in your house. I, I, I'm leaning towards NXT in your house. That's why tonight is a little bit loaded as far as topics go. And there's even a few topics that I left off for tonight. But uh, I will definitely leave update everybody on social media and in the community section. As of now, it looks like We'll do uh, a recap, a quick one, Saturday night after NXT, and then Sunday after Hell in a Cell, we'll recap too. By the way, I have no idea who made this, but if even if you're on audio only, you got to go out of your way and just check out the video of tonight's episode. Go to the 52-minute mark. I have no idea who made this artwork, but... Everybody who is tuning in live right now on YouTube, I guarantee this will make your night if you didn't see it. Somebody took the uh, AJ Styles, Finn Balor, and Liv Morgan match against the Judgment Day and ran it through the program where they look elderly. And if you look at this, I don't know if it's just me, but does Edge look like Shane Douglas with a beard? Does Damian Priest look like a Puerto Rican version of Bill O'Reilly? I don't know what the fuck Rhea Ripley looks like right now. Everybody in the chat is like, that's awesome. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Look at AJ Styles. He looks like a fat hillbilly. Finn Balor. Finn Balor looks good. I don't know. Liv Morgan looks like um, Wendy Richter with blonde hair. Oh, my God, whoever did this is a goddamn genius. I saw that, and I said, yes, Thursdays we talk about NXT and AEW. We don't talk about WWE. But I had to go out of my way and put this on there tonight. Oh, you, you know that I will re-show re that on Sunday. In fact, when we get to that match, when we cover that match, I'll probably put that banner on the screen. For everybody, because not everybody tunes in on Thursdays because they don't want to hear NXT and AEW stuff. Um, one final WWE thing to talk about, other than the watch party plugs for tomorrow, Max Caster, because AEW is in L.A., Los Angeles, he went to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and he passed by Vince McMahon's star. And if you look, um, he posed giving the star the middle finger. I don't. I saw people on social media like, wow, so unfucking professional. You know, my God, you know, lighten up. I didn't think that was big of a deal. I didn't think that was big of a deal. You know, I thought it was funny. Max Caster, I mean, Vince McMahon, he's supposed to be evil, anti-AEW. I didn't find that disrespectful. I'm, I even think Vince McMahon probably got a laugh out of that. So I figured I'd share the picture so you could see it for yourself. Um, by the way, for the watch party tomorrow, if you want to join us for Rampage, Tomorrow, it's going to be CM Punk is the theme. Now, unfortunately, I didn't take it out of my collection. But if you want to go on eBay, you could see for yourself. Tomorrow, there's going to be four items given away for CM Punk related. One is going to be, actually, I have it on the screen. One is going to be the AEW Tops card that you know we've given away before. Also, I have an autographed UFC rookie card. That will also be part of the package. And then, oh, yeah, here's the card. Here's the card. And just for fun, we're going to give away this CM Punk WWE toothbrush and toothpaste 
sealed in the package. I was going to open this up a while ago and try it live on the show. But I figured, who wants to see me brush my teeth? I think this is from like 2010 or something. I don't know. But yeah, so that'll be part of it. And you get the ice cream wrapper, the CM Punk ice cream wrapper. So if you're part of the watch party tomorrow and you mingle, you will be part of that contest. CM Punk AEW card, CM Punk autographed UFC rookie card, ice cream wrapper, toothbrush and toothpaste. So we cover the gamut. By the way, I'm going to give this away very, very soon. The box is a little dingy, but you know, we, you've seen this before. This is Samoa Joe's TNA Bash and Brawler. This is from, I think, what, 2006? It still works. Look at this. I See if you can hear this. You think you can take me? I'm a walking boar. Watch out. Here comes a muscle buster. Ugh. Time for the Kikina Clutch. Pretty cool. When was the last time you saw one of these? So, yeah. We're going to give this away very, very soon. So, that'll keep on the lookout for that. Later on, I got to do a quick giveaway to give away a toxic attraction, triple autograph photo from the watch party from Tuesday. Speaking of NXT, um, NXT this week was highlighted by the summit featuring the women. Um, you know, it was okay. I mean, Katana Chance, Caden Carter, and Wendy Chu. Summit with... Uh, Toxic Attraction and Mandy Rose. Wendy Chu putting Mandy Rose through a table. It was a fun segment. Something made me laugh my ass off. Two things, actually. And anybody who's live right now is part of Watch Party, you got to back me up in the chat room when I bring up, when I bring up Sangha and when we bring up uh, Legado del Fantasma and Tony D'Angelo, Tony Cheese Nips and Stacks and Two Dimes. We had Pretty Deadly beat Roderick Strong and Damon Kemp. Uh, Cora Jade over Electra Lopez. Wes Lee over Zion Quinn. And it was funny because Wes Lee's cutting his promo in the back. And I've said this repeatedly. He reminds me of Ricochet so much. The way he talks, the way he looks before, and pauses before he says things, the way he just looks. I mean, obviously, they don't have the same hair. But when he was talking about as long as he has br a breath in him, He's going to give his all. And when I was in a watch party, I said, you know, where's Sangha going to come in? And he walked in there, and uh, I was like five, ten seconds before anything Sangha said, I was calling his promo word for word. I even said, you'll fight with your heart. you got the big heart. And it literally said the exact same word. It was funny. Something else that happened. We'll get to it. Solo Sokoa over Duke Hudson. Grayson Waller over Josh Briggs. Ivy Nile over Kiana James. We had Cameron Grimes beating Nathan, Nathan Frazier in a non-title match. Uh, and the, the Summit. The rating went down. Last week was 551. This week was 534. For those curious, because we were supposed to get the final of the women's breakout tournament, Tiffany Stratton versus Roxanne Perez, WWE decided to hold off on it because we have in your house Sunday, excuse me, Saturday, and all the attention they wanted to focus on in your house, and they felt having a winner of a breakout tournament should be uh, more of a focus. It should feel more important. And it was, would have been overshadowed with the lead-in for In Your House. Plus, Mandy Rose still has a title defense. And I still think Roxanne Perez is going to take this. If she does, then you want Mandy Rose to come out there with the confrontation. You do that yesterday. You know, it doesn't really fit because you have Wendy Chu that still has the match and puts it to a table. And, you know, so it was smart for them to hold off for a week. So that's the reason why there's no controversy, no illness issues. And, uh, and just one more time while I take a little sip. I think whenever we hit a love for the show, we got to put that on the screen. I'm telling you, edge looks like Shane Douglas. 
I want him to go like like this. Is that what Shane Doug? Shane Doug just do this. Yeah. Edge, one time. Do this. <laughs> That's awesome, man. All right. Yesterday on uh, Tuesday on NXT, I left my ass off. They had uh, a segment with Legado del Fantasma and uh, Tony D'Angelo, who I call Tony Cheese Nips, stacks in two dimes. They're on a boat. And you got Electra Lopez telling the, the, you know, the, the head guy, the pilot, whatever you call him, you know, take us somewhere nice. So they're riding in the middle of the ocean. So they're trying to settle their differences, and they come up with a match. Hey, hey, how are you doing? This is what we do. And in your house, me and my two guys take on you and your two guys, Santos, and the winner is part of the other guy's crew. First of all, if you do suspension of disbelief, whether it's Goodfellas or the Sopranos or the Godfather, they no way you could have Legado del Fantasma being part of their army. You know, they might be, you know, disposable soldiers. If you ever watch the old Star Trek from the 60s with Captain Kirk, William Shatner, whenever you watched an episode and they were going to a planet, you would see like extra actors that would be on the show. And you knew the minute you saw extra actors, you knew that they were dying. They, they were there for only one reason to, to die. That's, that's all they were for. Legado del Fantasma being part of Tony D'Angelo's crew, they would be there just to be disposable. Like, we ain't going to have our guys go out there and take care of business. We send these schmucks. This way they get whacked. Ah, you know, we, we do. They agree to this stipulation. And, of course, it's storyline, but it's one of the most dumbest stipulations ever heard. The losing team joins the other crew. If Tony D'Angelo stacks and two dimes lose, you know, you should have, they should have had a female in their group. They could have put Ariana Grace, Santino Morella's daughter. She would have fit perfect for that. If they didn't have toxic attraction, JC Jane would have fit that. They look perfect for Guidettes. They should have done something where Tony says, hey, Santos, you lose, we get Electra. She's our maid. She's our servant. Oh, wait, wait, 2022, you can't do something like that? So they do this stupid stipulation, but the best part about it is after they agree, they shake hands. And Tony D'Angelo is literally like, hey, let's get out of here. You're in the middle of the fucking ocean. Where are you going to go? The, to the bathroom? You're on a boat. The boat's not a yacht. It's not a cruise ship that seats 25,000. It's a little boat that seats 10 people. Hey, I, all right, hey, all right, so it's a deal, right? All right, stacks, two dimes, let's get out of here. Where the fuck you going? To the sun deck? Oh, man, I watched that. I'm like, who thought of that? Really, really stupid. All right, predictions. Predictions are going to take five minutes. There's only six matches, and honestly, I don't see any title changes going down. Christopher Segovia says, I am speaking facts. Tony D needs a female in that group. I agree, man. You need a nice guidette for that group. Come on, WWE. If, if you really are checking out, so, oh, by the way, you may get that picture, everyone. You may get that photo opportunity. Someone claims, and I believe him, he claims that he is getting in touch with WWE about getting me tickets for NXT Tuesday, September 12th, I think it is, and to go backstage. I know tickets are free, but I'm going to be in Florida on my honeymoon that week. And, you know, I, if I go, I, I'd like to, you know, get a little tour, you know? I mean, you know, I'm supporting him since fucking 79. So you might actually get Don Tony and Don Tony shaking hands you might see it that photo op of the two dons that may happen and i'm telling you if they come through and say yeah we'll hook you up i'm going there with a suit i'm bringing a suit all the way to florida just for that picture just for that picture all right nxt in your house let's do it let's do it 
match one, there's only six matches. And honestly, I think every match is predictable. Uh, we have Pretty Deadly defending the NXT tag titles against the Cree brothers. If the Cree brothers lose, they're out of diamond mine, which is stupid in itself because Ivy Nile, I, I mean, they'll probably play off like, you know, whose side is she going to be on? And I think that she'll probably go on her own. But it, the Cree brothers are going to lose. The storyline is that they're going to get kicked out of Diamond Mine. You will see a match between members of Diamond Mine happen. Then after that, pay attention to Roderick Strong. We talked about this, what, three or four weeks ago? Nobody reported what we talked about. I saw one schmuck who does a podcast. After I said it, he tried to report it as news on his page. Like, hey, my sources tell me. That WWE X Roderick Strong, when he requested his release, look, could you stay a little bit longer and help us get through this storyline with the diamond mine and Roderick Strong being a professional said, yeah, no problem. So once this breakup happens and the following match happens, that's when you got to start paying attention to the future of Roderick Strong. Anything can happen, but preparing you. So they're going to lose. And then we'll see Stevenson and... Um, Roderick Strong versus the Creed Brothers. Creed Brothers will probably be victorious in there. And then Ivy Nile, I could picture it. You could have Stevenson. I know he's going under another name now, but you could have him and Roddy Strong on one side, the Creed Brothers on the other. And you could have Ivy Nile in the middle of the ring, outside the ring, and she doesn't know which side to support. Remember that. But that's the, that's, that's the story. Next. Carmelo Hayes trying to regain the NXT North American Championship from Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes promising Solo Sokoa he's got the next shot. They revisited that promise over and over and over again. Um, they're not going to have Cameron Grimes lose the championship so the promise never happens. Sure, you could have Solo Sokoa feud with um, Carmelo Hayes. But I think Solo Sokoa is the next person to win that championship. So I'm going with Cameron Grimes to retain. And then I expect Solo Sokoa to ultimately beat Cameron Grimes and become your North American champion. And yes, everybody in the chat, post your predictions. Play along. You know, there's only six matches. So everyone, wow, we're 100%. Everybody is going with Cameron Grimes. Okay. Next. Toxic Attraction, defending the tag titles against Katana and Caden. Uh, um, the for Katana and former Casey Cotanzaro. Uh, Katana Chance, I like her. Um, you know, she used to be a little bit injury prone. I really like Caden Carter. And it's not just the contact lenses. I know you could, like, get into a trance looking at her eyes. You know, let's let, let you... I, did I hopefully I didn't like lower the pixelation too much, but there you go. That's that's somewhat of a 720p quality photo. Oh shit. I forgot. When I shut it down, it goes back to the beginning. Okay. It's a good look. Don't look. Don't look. Stop at the fingers. There we go. Okay. Tox attraction is gonna retain. As much as I think Caden Carter and Casey Cononzaro, Katana Chance, are doing well. Um I don't think they're at the point yet where they can lead as tag team champions. A lot of people think Io Shirai is about to make her return. Um, you know, that's possible. I don't see Toxic Attraction. A lot of people think that they're losing and going to the main roster to help with the tag team situation. With all due respect, I like Toxic Attraction, but I don't think that they are main roster ready. You know, you really pay close attention to their work they're not on that level yet. You put them in matches with some of those very experienced women out there. You know, there's only so much that Natalia could sell. You know, it's going to be a little bit sloppy. So I say toxic attraction is going to retain. Next on the list. <laughs> Legato del Fantasma versus Tony Cheese Nips, two dimes and stacks. Losers become part of the winner's crew. I don't see Stacks and Two Dimes ready yet to really act. 
if Legato wins and they're starting to make these guys do stupid things, they're too young. They're very, very green. One of the guys, the one that doesn't look like Big Vito, the one that doesn't wear the hat. With all due respects, he looks like he works at Target. Would you like that in a size XL? Do you, would, you like, would you like for me to wrap it? I mean, just because you shave part of your hair, I mean, oh, oh he doesn't look like he, that he fits. I think that would be awful being in the camp for Legado del Fantas. I think Santos Escobar and Legado would do so much better in the acting department having to listen to the other guys. Now, the question is, how long are they in the group? 30 days, 7 days, 15 days? Hey, WWE didn't even think of a fucking time frame. We got to come up with everything. I'm going with the Italians to beat the Latinos. People hate when I say that. It is what it is. Mandy Rose will retain the NXT Women's Championship. She will beat Wendy Chu. It will be a great match. You know, Wendy Chu, you know, multiple gimmick changes. I'm enjoying this character, and they have tweaked it. If you really pay close attention, when she first was doing a sleeping gimmick, it was annoying. You know, if, you, if she was in Times Square and she was sleeping on the sidewalk, I guarantee you people would walk by and probably, like, kick her, maybe, like, drop a little soda on her, throw a little dirt on her head, wake up. You know, like, some of what she did was annoying. Now she's smiling. Everybody likes her. She's having fun. She, nothing bothers her. So I like the little tweaking that they've done of Wendy Chu. But she ain't winning. I'm with you, Austin. She ain't winning. Mandy Rose has been doing a fabulous job with that women's championship. Whoever beats her, it is going to feel bigger. Whether it's Roxy, whether it's Nikita Lyons, whether it's, you know, I don't think it's going to be Cora Jade, but never say never. But Mandy Rose will retain. And a very intriguing main event. Ron Breaker defending the NXT championship against Joe Gacy. If Ron Breaker gets disqualified, he loses the championship. As I brought up the last two weeks, they never mentioned about getting counted out of the ring. Usually when you do that storyline, it's usually if you get disqualified or counted out, you lose the title. They focused only on DQ. And that's done by design. And you could see this a mile away. Joe Gacy is going to keep tempting Ron Breaker to break the rules. You could picture it now. Joe Gacy is going to give a chair or throw a chair to Ron Breaker, and he's probably going to pull an Eddie Guerrero, or he's going to say, please, hit me. He's probably going to put his hands behind his back, close his eyes. He's going to yell at Ron Breaker, get him pissed. You're going to hear, you know, Wade Barrett and Vic Joseph don't do it, Bron. Don't do it. And then the fans are going to be in an uproar. And Bron's going to be like, if this is a red and black chair, he's going to... And then he's going to put it down. Because Bron Breaker's too nice of a guy. He'll get pissed. He'll come this close to breaking the rules. But he won't break them. Some people think that he's going to get disqualified, lose the championship, go to the main roster. And they think getting disqualified and losing the title is better than him getting pinned. I disagree. Ron Breaker will resist the temptation from Joe Gacy. My biggest concern is, do the Druids undress? I know that doesn't sound appropriate, but do they reveal themselves? I think they do. I think Ron Breaker will probably pull the uh, face coverings off of them. And I think... It's going to be the grizzled young veterans. You know, we joked and said maybe it's uh, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. I know it doesn't make sense. If it was Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, I would say the only way that that would happen is if Joe Gacy won. If Joe Gacy won, you know, but uh, look, for everyone that has said to me the grizzled young veterans would be a disappointment, you got to understand something. This is developmental. 
this storyline is for the NXT fans, the fans who tune in every week. The, you're not going to get household names. For the casual viewer out there, these druids are not for the casual viewer that it's going to be a big reveal and it's going to be people that were going to be shocked. You want to shock me, let it be Scott and Rick under the, the outfits. But this is going to be more in line of NXT. And I think the Grizzled Young Veterans, they have not done much with since, you know, their last loss. Could it work? I don't know. By the way, I can't wait for Giovanni Vinci. Giovanni Vinci. Giovanni Vinci. Do you, you, all know, you all know now who that is, right? Some people the other day in the watch party had no idea. If you seen those vignettes with that very deep woman's voice, almost manly, but that's European. Giovanni Vinci. Um, that is Fabian Aikner of Imperium. You remember they brought Gunther and Ludwig, Ludwig onto the main roster. Fabian Aikner went bye-bye. They repackaged Fabian Aikner. He will now be a Giovanni Vinci. Giovanni Vinci. Kathleen Turner, her voice is a little deep. It's a little deep. I don't know if it's that deep, but it's deep. So, before we move on from NXT in your house, I want to show you something. What a difference a year makes. What a difference two years makes. Just for the hell of it. Is this in your house? Hold on. Oh, shit. I still got this. We never gave it away. It's autographed by everybody. Yeah, it's from last year. I never, wow, I got that a year already. Holy shit. This is NXT in your house for 2020 and 2021. Look at how many people are either no longer there or no longer in NXT. In 2020, we had Charlotte Flair versus Io Shirai and Rhea Ripley, Adam Cole versus Velveteen Dream, Karen, Karrion Cross with Scarlett versus Tommaso Ciampa, Keith Lee versus Johnny Gargano, Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. Ho oh, ho! And then you had uh, several women competing, almost all of them. I think actually, actually they're all gone. If you think about it. Uh, Raquel's on the main roster now. Last year we had the Fatal Five Way Adam Cole, Pete Dunne, Karrion Cross, Gargano, Kyle O'Reilly. It's amazing if you look at this, how many people are not only gone, but the other ones are on the main roster. I mean, they really are turning over NXT. You go back, it's amazing. Even just go back one year, how much NXT's changed. That'll make you think about something. The current roster, what's that going to look like a year from now? Based on that, it's going to look totally different next year. So Braun could, could be on the main roster next year. Giovanni Vinci, I don't know about that. Nothing against Fabian Aikner, but I don't know. Um, but some of the other wrestlers, would Tony D'Angelo be experienced enough to go to the main roster? Stacks in two dimes survive, or do they get, they sleep with the fishes? Okay. What else do we got? Oh, we still got questions, obviously. Um, I'm just closing out. Most of my photos. By the way, I told you what the Rampage Watch Party Prize will be tomorrow. For everybody who joins me for the SmackDown Watch Party, someone is going to win this Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair autographed photos. I know the picture is not the biggest, but I had to rush to get prepared for the show tonight, but someone is going to win those two photos. By the way, here is the contest. This is for this triple signed Toxic Attraction 11 by 14 signed photo. Everybody who was part of the watch party and mingling, chatting, not just signing in and walking away for two hours and think, hey, I'll grab a prize. Everybody, his name is there. I am going to spin the wheel live. Whoever it lands on will get this toxic attraction 
It's autographed by all three. It is beautiful. I mean, it's 11 by 14. It's not a 8 by 10. So, uh, and I have two of them. So we're only giving away one tonight, but I'm going to spin this wheel, and whoever it lands on wins. Good luck. Let's see who it lands on. All right. It's coming. Oh, who won? Al. Al. Oh, my God. I think you live in France. Ah, uh, shit. This motherfucker lives so far away. Uh, Al, I don't care if you're five miles away or 5,000 miles away. You're part of the contest. You get your prize. Um, I've paid $100 in shipping in the past to ship things. So, my friend, you won. Congratulations. DM me. You got three days, four days. If you don't claim it, then it goes back into the pool. So, all right. Congrats to Al. Al. Matt Cardona, the current NWA. Oh, shit. I fucked up. I fucked up. I am so sorry. We got to take a quick intermission. I promised Kevin Castle that I was going to record his show. Oh, my God. Nobody reminded me. Oh, I feel terrible. I legit feel bad. Let's take a two-minute break. We'll come back. We'll get into a couple other news tidbits, do some questions, and get out of here. Go get something to drink. Go take a leak. Do not go anywhere. I'll be right back. We're back. We're back to you. Okay. They waited a little bit. They started about five minutes ago, so I recorded anyway. I have to change the music. Somebody made it for me, and I never used it because I thought the music sucks. But it's three minutes. So, uh, all right. So we're back a little bit early. All right. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. The ultra smooth package is back. And for those out there, even if you're not in a relationship right now, if you're like me, and I'll be honest with you, for many, many years I neglected down there. You know, sometimes you have a nice yard, you have company come over, you trim the hedges, you cut the grass, everybody's sitting in your yard, you're having a nice barbecue. Wow, you keep your lawn nice and groomed, nice and cut. And then what happens with your yard? Nobody comes over. Eh, I'll cut the grass next week. And then it turns into next month. Then it turns into next year. And then what happens? You throw a ball into the yard for your dog to run after and the dog disappears because now the grass is gone like this. That's what it looked like for yours truly down there until I got manscaped. So for all of you out there, in case you're not aware, 85% of people polled said that they, it is a turnoff 
when they are dating someone and they are intimate, they look down there and it looks like cornfields. So if you go to manscaped.com, they have lots of grooming products for men. Um, it, don't just get it for yourself. Get it for a parent, a boss, Father's Day's coming up. And if you're embarrassed, you don't have to buy stuff just for down there. They have shaving products, body spray, uh, soap, lip balm, shavers, nose trimmers. They have everything you could possibly think of. But the ultra smooth package, right now, if you go to manscaped.com and you enter the promo code Don Tony, you get 20% off and free shipping. That comes out to $29.99. You get the crop exfoliator. You go in the shower. You wash down there. It cleans everything. It gets rid of dead skin. You get the crop gel, which prepares it for, you know, the trim. And then you have your razors. Um, the crop shaver, you know, beautiful blades. They give you some refills. Can't go wrong. $29.99. If you want to splurge a little bit more, you get the low mower 4.0. Let me tell you something. If I wanted to, I could use it on my head and go bald. That's how good the low mower works. But um, Brian says if he buys it for his boss, he'll be fired. Yeah, you know, some of the products, you might feel a little awkward. I'm not going to lie. When I bought this stuff for my dad, like I got him foot powder because his feet smell. But I also bought him some socks. I got him, you know, a couple of different things. But, you know, it, it, they got so much to choose from there. And like I said, I would never plug anything on this show unless it was something that I used and endorsed. You know, so Manscaped, and believe me, if if I was hot up, for sponsors, we'd be plugging crazy shit for the last couple of years. Manscaped.com is truly uh, an upper tier product out there. Twenty percent off. Use the promo code Don Tony. You know, the July what June nineteenth is Father's Day, so you know, get your ass moving. Father's Day's coming up. You know, they got a lot of things to choose from over there. So. And a big fuck you to everybody who unsubscribed from Patreon because I spent two hours with a sponsor. They don't want to see me make anything. Oh, wait, wait, wait until the video announcement that might be coming next week. We have meetings going on tomorrow. By the way, if you go to my Twitter, at Don Tony D, I gave a huge uh, tease and a hint as far as where I'm going. You go there and you look at yesterday's posts, you can figure it out. It's pretty wild. You go there and you see all the famous people there. You got Sean Spears. You got uh, uh, the Iconics over there, Inspiration. You got, you know, um, Chelsea Green's show. Like, I'm going to be around royalty once again. Pretty cool. Now, that music sucked. I don't like that music. So anyway, speaking of Chelsea Green, her hubby, Matt Cardona, he's fucked for the foreseeable future. He's got a torn bicep. He is the current NWA heavyweight champion. And they have a pay-per-view coming up called Always Ready. And always is spelled with a Z. I don't know what the purpose of that was. Was it supposed to be edgy? I, I don't know, but it's NWA Presents always ready all right anyway matt cardona with the torn bicep they claim he is gonna appear he says i don't care if i have to drive walk or crawl even if your bicep wasn't torn wouldn't you still have to do the same thing to get there i don't care if i have to drive walk or crawl you tore your bicep you didn't tore your feet or your legs dumbass I don't know what's going to happen, but the champ will be there. Cardona is going to be there with champ. I expect him to drop the title. I expect someone to bait him into having a match, and Cardona will say, ring the bell. We'll probably have a surprise. Who knows? Maybe uh, W. Morrissey shows up. Maybe W. Morrissey is your next NWA champion. Yeah, extreme rules. I know. It's like that, but NWA, it, it doesn't come off the same. I don't know. It just doesn't come off the same. All right. So we are at 90 minutes. Since Thursdays is usually Q&A, and our channel members obviously get VIP first dibs and given questions. 
Let's spend about 20, 25 minutes now. Um, I know we have a couple of super chats that I definitely will get into. And obviously, you know, actually, we we'll, we have two. Let me get into them, if you don't mind. Chris Cutra, he saw the picture of Max Caster giving the middle finger to Vince McMahon. He can't blame him because if he was working with Rockabilly in 2022, he'd do whatever to curry favor with the boss to get out of it. I'm telling you, I am enjoying the ass boys and the acclaimed with Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn acting like his sons don't matter, but he is gushing over the acclaimed. That's some funny shit, man. I mean, let's be honest. FTR and CM Punk versus Caster and the uh, ass boys yesterday was not very good. They missed quite a few spots. Maybe they were just starstruck. Look. They've been in the business for a little bit, but, you know, they're still new, you know, especially talking about the ass boys. You could be in the ring with FTR and CM Punk. You know, I think that would intimidate anybody still fairly new in the business. So I kind of give them a little bit of a break, but now this segments have been funny. And honestly, with uh, Max Caster's partner, Anthony Bowen's injured, you know, this kind of like keeps him in a storyline. They're certainly not going to push him singles. You know, probably one of the worst things to be in AEW right now is a single star. Unless you are at the top of the heap or former WWE guy, you know, you're an up-and-comer and you're a single star. If you're not one of those that AEW looks at as the future, I don't know where you fit in. I don't know where you fit in. King of Games 405. What do I think of the footage of Punk and MJF? off the air, uh, the pro. To me, it's the same thing. It reminded me, I don't know, again, I don't know if you saw uh, 1996 CyberSlam. Um, yeah, I don't know if you saw that. You know, when Brian Pillman did what he did, Shane Douglas, who was the leader of ECW at the time, came out and chased him away. And they were supposed to have this big feud and unfortunately, he had the, the Hummer accident, so it got derailed. Um, but to me, the similarities are there. Instead of Shane Douglas, we got CM Punk, and instead of Brian Pillman, we have MJF. So, you know, any promos, any segments, anything. Like I said, you know, nobody brought up the profanity filter. Nobody brought up the delay button. You know, all these networks have it. So when people are like, oh, my God, it's got to be a shoot, you know, it, 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 because he said the F-bomb. Yeah, they could. You don't think that Tony Khan and the network wouldn't have had a little bit extra preparation and catch MG, MJF decides to be the ultimate unprofessional? Come on. Sir, you know, when you really start thinking about that and you think about, oh, he's not going to screw a ward, you realize what you got here. And honestly, Bravo to MJF, and I got to give nothing but credit to Tony Khan in this one. If Tony Khan, by some strike of luck, happens to see this episode tonight, um, yeah, I know, you know, in the past there was some anger over some previous things I've said, goody, goody, but uh, he sees this brilliant, brilliant job. The question is, does he go on TV? Does MJF ultimately attack Tony Khan? Just throwing ideas out there, throwing ideas. All right. So everybody in green obviously gets a little VIP. You post a question, just write the word question. This is for everybody that's live right now. Just write the word question before you question so I could spot a little bit quicker. And, you know, something that doesn't involve too many brain cells, you know, we'll answer some quick things, you know, and uh, sure, Everybody who is green and super chats, which is a different type of green, you know, they get a little VIP. It's the right thing to do. Mr. Rams fan, Wardlow or Miro, can Tony Khan book them strong without crossing paths too soon? Um, Sure they can. Uh, they could do pull aparts. They could, uh, you know. See, Wardlow's not aligned with anybody right now. Neither is Miro. So I could just see things getting way out of control, way out of hand. 
you know, I could see matches just turning into, you know, just an absolute clusterfuck. And I say that in a very good way. I just don't know if you feed Wardlow to Miro, you know, so quick. Miro, a lot of people love the Redeemer. I don't want to see Miro lose to Wardlow. I don't think they need to cross paths. I don't think that's necessary at all. Uh, so I say, no, there's no rush to it. I don't think it's needed right now. Um, Kevin Milwaukee. Tony Khan calls himself Don Tony Khan. <laughs> he will shake his damn head. I don't think he would call himself Don Tony Khan. That rhymes too much. Hey, I'm Don Tony Khan, the poet in case you didn't know it. Oh! All right. Looking, looking, looking. Noob. Noob, noob, noob. Will we see Tony Khan as an on... Yeah, I just said it. I think it'll happen. Tony Khan said he will never be an on-air character. He will be an on-air character. If he realizes that it intrigues the storyline, we get more people to tune in, Tony Khan will be an on-air character. See, here's the genius of this. And you heard it here. Tony... Now, when I say this, people are gonna, heads are going to explode because people are going to be like, fuck you saying? Think about it. It makes sense. Tony Khan will be an on-air character by not being an on-air character. Tony Khan will be attacked maybe in the back. Tony Khan will be attacked, but it'll look like he's not an on-air character, but he is because he's being attacked. Follow what I'm saying? So Tony Khan will be an on-air character by not being an on-air character. So when he gets attacked, people are going to, I'm sure people will realize it's storyline, but they'll be like, hey, wait, you know, he's in the bag. That wasn't about, that's the way you do it, I personally think. Um, cutting the mic yesterday was good. I'm not saying it wasn't, but again, you know, the profanity filter, if they were really concerned, that would have been going off. They would have caught all of that. So, um, I don't believe MJF is going to WWE right now. Uh, whether Tony, listen, Tony Khan, you know the amount of money he's got. The problem that everybody seems to not think about, and you see, here's where I defend Tony Khan, is again, it's nobody's business what wrestlers are making in that company. It is nobody's business. Um, it frustrates some of the up-and-comers because they feel that their value is much more than what they're being paid for. Totally get it. But the thing is this. Um, if Tony Khan didn't renegotiate a contract but just gave MJF a bonus for what he's done so far, it's no wrestler's business there to know what that was. And that gets dangerous. This is why Tony Khan's got to be careful about this. You start getting websites creating news claiming that Tony Khan gave him a million-dollar bonus for everything he's done for the last couple of years. You're going to have other lower-card guys, maybe Guevara, maybe others, that feel like, wait a minute, I deserve something too. You gave this motherfucker a million dollars. Look at what I've been doing. Look, I've been going off ladders, going off the top of buildings for you. What about Darby Allen and others? So what happens? The problem is you don't know if what's being reported is accurate. So if those wrestlers take bullshit reports and then they start, that turns into a fucking mess behind the scenes in AEW. So Tony Khan has got to be really careful about this but whatever was done is behind the scenes, whether it's a bonus, whether it's renegotiating a contract, whether it's adding a year and giving them a sign, whatever it is, we're not going to know. There's no reason for us to know. MGF certainly is not going to leak it out. So, yeah, he will ultimately go to WWE, I think. But, you know, Tony Khan sees what's going on here, and Tony Khan, the billionaire, can afford it. It's just you got to be very careful how you do it because you don't want to rock the boat with others in the company. It's not easy. Very easy to tweet 
certain things. But it's not easy when you have other people on that roster that could turn around and start saying, hey, I deserve, I deserve, I deserve. Especially when the news is wrong. Good Panda, what's up? Okay. DX, D Extreme. Over the weekend, what solution do I think happened? MJF caved to an extension past 2024. Tony Khan caved to more money. Or to... <laughs> Everything that went on this weekend was to get more attention on the pay per view, to get more people to buy the pay per view, to see what the fuck was going to happen. And what happened on Dynamite yesterday was to get people to tune in. Oh my God, what the fuck is he going to say? Is this guy going to break character? Is he going to quit on the air? Is he going to go into business for himself? There was no sit down. There was, it, I, listen, again, MJF coming into the company from MLW three years ago, they had no idea how good he was going to be in his role. So they were not going to pay him premium money from three years ago. That is not a storyline. That is business. Just because it's fascinating business doesn't mean it's a storyline. People got to stop with, it was a work, a shoot turned into a work. No, it's not. It's fucking business. It's intriguing business. That doesn't mean it's a storyline. Don't listen to what you're reading. What people are trying to do right now is trying to sacrifice any legitimacy that they have coming out of this. They did it with Cody. Now they did it again with MJF. And unfortunately, because so many people did it, a lot of people believe it. Think about it. Just take a step back and you'll realize, holy shit, we got played. Well, we didn't get played because we saw it a mile away. Thoughts on Theory teasing a match against Cena. I think it was about a month ago I said one of the rumored matches for WrestleMania last year. Actually, I remember. I gave away a John Cena, what, Expendables, whatever that show is. You know, the, you know which one I'm talking about. The superhero character, I gave away a picture of him and a picture of Theory. And I said that that's the rumored WrestleMania match of next year. I almost said the Untouchables. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that was a contest recently. Theory and Cena is a rumored match for WrestleMania. The Peacemaker. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah, we gave away a Peacemaker and a Theory signed photo. And uh, that is a rumored match for next year. I could see it happening. Absolutely could see it happening. Um, I think it would be good. I mean, I think Cena would get, go on top. But, yeah, I, could, I definitely could see that. Sure. All right, let's keep it coming. You know, this is open to everyone. I don't want anybody to think, like, oh, you know, unless you're green, you know, I'm going to be mean. You post. And I will talk. We got about 15 minutes, a little less. I want to finish around two hours. So, uh, Kevin Milwaukee, if Brian Pillman had passed away the year Eddie Guerrero did, do we? Do I think she would have gotten the Vicky Guerrero treatment? No, no. Melanie Pillman was never looking to be in the wrestling business. She was never looking to be a character. Um, she just loved her husband, Brian, and wanted to take care of the kids. And unfortunately, a lot of depression and temptations and demons, you know, steered her in the wrong path. Look, if you read between the lines and what Brian Pillman Jr. said, that her demons caught up to her, you know, she didn't, as far as I'm I know, we didn't hear of any terminal, you know, like big health issues that she was battling. He said he saw her recently and she was, you know, she looked good and she looked sober. So the past suddenly, you don't know really if it was because of that. I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, nasty here, but look at others from Jake Roberts to others who did nuts with the narcotics and they're still, you know, kicking and going strong. So, you know, it's a shame. It's a shame what happened, but she would not have been a character. No. The funny thing is, I wonder if Vince McMahon wanted her to be a character 
when Brian Pillman passed. That interview was so awkward and so awful. I remember, you know, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I remember being on the hotline and everybody was pissed off. Like, wow, what a fucking asshole. What an asshole. He was worse than like Maury or, well, Maury wasn't even bad at that time, but this was like worse than some smutty talk show host, like really being, oh, Vince, he looked like he was getting like his jollies off of, like the pain, like he was looking for the pain reaction. And she was like, the fuck, what, what do you think I'm going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. My husband just died. It was weird, man. I won't even watch it back. It's one of those, like I said, other than the Katie Vick, that's probably the second most uncomfortable I ever felt watching WWE programming. Do I see Wardlow facing Punk soon? Take or take the TNT title? Well, I think it was on Patreon Tuesday. Somebody asked me, like, who do I think is going to be the one to take the title off of CM Punk? And my thought was Wardlow right away. But now I'm wondering if MJF ultimately takes this title. You know, something that I said on Tuesday that I should have said earlier, but I'll say it now because it's better late than never. If I was AEW, MJF, should show up in other promotions right now. Whether it's MLW, Impact Wrestling, show up somewhere else. I go whatever I go wherever the fuck I want. Tony, look, fire me. Tony, you don't like me here in NWA? Taking Matt Cardona's title? Fire me then. Hey, you don't like me here in MLW? Hey, Tony, look where I'm at. He I don't think they would dare have him go to like a WWE pay-per-view. I mean, I remember what, the Voodoo Kim Mafia? Didn't they show up at like, a, they were sitting in the rafters at, at a WWE event or they tried to? I think Shane Douglas might have. I don't remember who it was. But if I was MJF and Tony Khan right now, and uh, yeah, you could email me a thank you. I'll keep it a secret, guys. But um, MJF should be showing up in other promotions right now. Do some stuff. Get on the mic. Hey, Tony, you don't like it? Fire me. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Fire me if you don't like it. John Vickers, has WWE rehired Bray Wyatt back? I don't know if he has, they have yet, but I've been saying since day one, Bray Wyatt will return to WWE. He will be back. He will be back. Um, it won't boost ratings. It won't boost ticket sales. If you look at Cody, it's strengthened ticket sales, but it, you know, you don't see a big surge in sales because of Cody. Cody just strengthens what WWE has. Same thing with Bray Wyatt. I believe Bray Wyatt absolutely will be back. We'll talk about it a little bit more on either Monday. We'll probably talk about it Monday because I know Bray Wyatt changed his profile picture. And if you look at it, it almost looks like a cocoon turning into a butterfly, but there's fire and it looks kind of like you got to go to look at his social media, see what I'm talking about. Rams fan Scarlett is booked for MLW. She is. Um, MJF fighting ring of honor guy really makes, doesn't make any sense. It wouldn't be the same because Tony Khan owns ring of honor. It wouldn't be the same. If Ring of Honor was still owned by Sinclair, then I would say, yeah, definitely. But no, it's got to be a company that's not owned by Tony Khan. And it's got to be a company. Look, Vader, I think it was 96. I might be wrong with the year, but Vader did that demolition tour and he showed up at all these different indie promotions and was just destroying people. And he was still part of WCW. You've never saw the story about the Vader indie tour. He was just a mile. I think he showed up in Memphis and a few other places. You go re go check that out because MJF could do the same thing. I mean, obviously, he would not destroy people like Vader did, but he could cause a hell of a lot of chaos. Ry Baker, I expect them to add more to Hell in a Cell. As we said on Monday, every match right now is a Raw match. I think we may see Gunther versus Ricochet, which would be very interesting because they just did this whole vignette about Ricochet and how much the title means to him. He lost that title right after that. I mean, that 
doesn't look good. You know, although I want Gunther is, to have gold. Yeah, I expect that match. Maybe we get a match with the Usos. That's possible. But right now, every match is a Raw match. Could get Butch versus Kofi. It doesn't feel important enough for pay-per-view, though. But that's not a bad match. Favorite version of LAX, Conan managing the originals. Talking about Homicide and Hernandez, I'm assuming. Hector Guerrero managing the originals. Homicide and Hernandez, I'm assuming. Or Conan with Santana and Ortiz. Or the new MLW LAX, the original. Homicide, Hernandez, and Conan. It was beautiful. 51-50. Why is Adam Shear so delusional? I am not allowed to criticize Adam Shear. You'll, you'll understand why soon. I control my narrative, VJ. Um, look, he's a little out there with his opinions. I'm one of those. I respect everybody's opinions. So it doesn't mean that they're smart or good opinions, but you know, I live in a country where you have a right. I mean, some people, unfortunately express their freedom of speech in a very stupid way. Um, you know, I see some of the stuff that's written on social media and I'm like, I can understand why somebody would take a stance on something, but you know, there's a way of doing it. You know, you don't have to be so confrontational. You know, it's funny when people are confrontational and then when they have the masses going after them, what's everybody ganging up on me for? Charlie's asking me my thoughts on the Depp trial. I thought Johnny Depp was going to get more in the end, money-wise. The Tulsa incident, its all that shit is terrible. The Texas school response, a lot of it's Monday morning quarterback. But again, you know, standing outside and trying to prepare a plan, it doesn't look good. Um, I did that rant four years ago. And unfortunately, I'm a nobody, so nobody listens to what I say. It, it sucks. It sucks. And, you know, I heard Biden did a speech tonight about guns, and I say the same thing. I know we don't talk politics on these shows anymore, but I will say this. You ban assault rifles, fine. You ban body armor, fine. When people kill people, they're breaking the law. You think they're going to turn around and say, oh, but uh, but the gun's illegal. I, c I can't use this. You know, they're going to fucking go in the black market and buy it anyway. So if anything, you're making the black market make more money because then the black market realizes like, hey, body armor is banned. Well, guess what? It just went up $500. You know, people want it that bad they can. You want ammunition like that, unfortunately, may delay, may take longer to get it. But if somebody wants it bad enough, they'll get it. So, you know, I, I applaud any type of, you know, con, you know, issues being addressed, but it's not going to fix the problem because someone that is hell-bent on committing mass murder, all right, they can't walk into a gun shop and buy a gun or buy an Uzi or buy whatever, AR-15. All right, well, I'll, I'll get my local shady, you know, street person to get it for me. That's the problem. You got hundreds of millions of guns out there. Where are they all going to go? You could have some whack job that's going to ultimately say, hey, let's give everybody $10,000 a gun. That will convince everybody to get rid of their guns. You'll see somebody come up with a crazy amount of money to try to get hundreds of millions of guns it's a problem that's going to never go away. Sadly, it's never going to go away. Fucked up. All right. Let's bring this home. We got about four minutes. Good topics. Let's go. Good topics. Not saying that wasn't a good topic. Good topics. Come on. Just like I said, just put question before it because I can read it quickly. Yeah, what's going on, Brian Cage? I thought Brian Cage aligning with MJF was a great idea. Whoever came up with that last week, Brian Cage, what the hell happened? Seriously. Oh, they got something planned for me. When? Christmas? 
I mean, think how many months ago that was. It's like four months ago. Nothing. Tony, what are you doing with Brian Cage? Run DMG. Better chance to get a title off of Roman Reigns. Drew McIntyre in the United Kingdom or Randy Orton at SummerSlam or someone else. Drew McIntyre in the United Kingdom would be massive. Look, they already sold 40,000 tickets in the UK. That's why, like, you know, it was stupid for Tony Khan to put that tweet. It was not necessary. They had sold 16,000 tickets for Money in the Bank. They still had sold more tickets than AEW did. Yeah, they made a mistake doing it in a stadium of 70,000, but still they did sell 16,000 tickets and they sold 40,000 in the UK. You get that kind of an audience, you got to give them something big in a return. I say Drew McIntyre wins the championship in the United Kingdom. That would be a massive moment for Drew McIntyre's career. DX Extreme, the women being booked in the main event five weeks in a row is not under the radar. We brought it up on, on Monday that Asuka was booked four weeks in a row main eventing Raw. It's sad that everybody else, you know, doesn't pay attention to it. But again, it's a, it's a salty topic because if you really go deep into it, you're forced to bring AEW into it. And a lot of people who are hardcore into AEW do not want to bring up Tony Khan in that conversation. So they elude it any way they can. It is what it is. All right. Me going to the live chat to choose a show's topic on the spot reminds him, Kevin, of the 80s NFL, you make the call. I don't remember that. But it sounds great. Sounds great. I love doing this. I love doing this. Um, I appreciate everybody who hung out tonight. And uh, we, had, we had a real good one. You know, it's, uh, you know, like I said, things get a little screwy this weekend because of NXT and Hell in the Cell. So tonight, I guess, was sort of like a Don Tony show episode, you know. But uh, who knows? Maybe we'll keep Thursdays like Thursday Night Dynamite. Doesn't feel the same, though, because the whole idea is Wednesday, Dynamite. Wednesday, Donomite, you know, a little play on words. It's not the same if it's a Thursday, but you guys tune in. I'll keep doing it. All right, so we're going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up. So I thank you all for hanging out tonight. Um, again, Saturday night, we will definitely do NXT in your house. Um, it's going to be a fast show. I mean, Six matches, I'm sure they'll throw something else in there, but to me, everything is uber predictable. I mean, I don't know how much we're going to be. I mean, I would probably, I'd even consider holding off until Sunday and do, look, you know what? Let's do this. Let's see what we get on SmackDown tomorrow. Because if we get two or three really good matches, the Hell in a Cell coming out of SmackDown, then you're like, okay, eight solid matches for Hell in a Cell. All right, we could do a nice recap out of that. But if it ends up staying with like seven matches and there's only one coming out of SmackDown, even Hell in the Cell's recap is going to be quick. So maybe we just do a one for both. I don't know. But uh, I will definitely let everybody know uh, by Saturday morning. So if you're a subscri subscriber here, you will see the alert. I'll post it on social media. I'll post it in the community section. You know how to reach me. So, you know, my gut feeling is NXT in your house recap Saturday night, short one. Sunday night, Hell in a Cell recap. Monday, we come back with the Don Tony Show, the Raw edition of it. And we get into all the news and the topics then. So on the way out, if you enjoyed tonight's show, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe. If you want to be part of La Nostra Familia, look at that button that says join now and see what it has to offer. And everyone. Be well, stay safe. Thank you as always for the support. I'd love to hear your feedback. Did I, look, don't say I convinced you to try to kiss my ass. Be honest. If you still feel that a lot differently about this MJF situation, post it in the comment section. 
I don't criticize people for have, having different opinions. So tell me in the comment section what you thought about what I said tonight. You know, if you agree, disagree, if you have a different spin on it that I don't, let me know because you might convince me also. So, but um, good show. Great convo. And I love what AEW did with MJF and Tony Khan. Good job. Be well, everybody. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster. For me to live any other way was nuts. To me, those goody good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead. I mean, they were suckers. They had no balls. If I wanted something, I just took it. I ran everything. I paid the bills. I paid the host. I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup. And I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody, while they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks.